right, for those of you who doesn't know who Derek Clement is, let me give you a brief synopsis of who I am and how I became a hairdresser effectively. So it's interesting because over 25 years ago, I was a young, young black guy in London. What? I could very, you could very well imagine London yeah. back in the back in the 70s and the 80s. It was very difficult actually, and um, um, selecting a career was also also very important. So I I basically had some challenges, and naturally um, we had you know, very difficult times. Racism was in the air; it was quite rampant, as you know. And um, coming from a very pro-black family, I just really felt the the need that. I would never really uh, work for sort of a corporate organization. Now, it's interesting because, let's go back to my school days. I remember clearly as a young boy, school was tough. I mean, can you imagine coming to this country as a young boy from the Caribbean? I encountered something I never, I never knew as a child. I never knew what it was like to be uh, being sort of disenfranchised, being, if you like, um, the lesser mortals, because in the Caribbean, we were all equal, we were all the same. When I came to London back in the day, very, very young, a young child, as a matter of fact, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend, I couldn't cope with um, uh, bigotry and xenophobia and, 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 and just outright racism. And I remember my family, my family was extremely, uh, as I said, pro-black. I mean, my brother was a Black Panther, my sister was a, a Rastafarian, my mother was very Pan-Africanist. So I thought to myself, um, as a young child coming up, this is it. I, I, I have to carry the, on the legacy of this being this this proud uh, black kid. But the thing is, so fast forward now, school living days, people were moving, my friends were going into various organizations, some went into the bank, some brothers went into work for British Airways, and I just couldn't understand why I should continue this, this, this embarrassment. If, if school was racist, then obviously uh, the, the corporate environment would be exactly the same. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to work for my people. Were there any black salons around? Sorry, were there any black businesses around? No, there was, there was not a single black business in those days that I remember, or I knew of, at least uh, a sort of a legitimate business in terms of, when I say legitimate, I'm referring to a, a large corporation. And I remember going to the hairdressers one very lovely summer's day with my girlfriend, and there I was. She went to this, I didn't know the place existed, I mean, obviously she... She was a young, uh, in fact, a, a tad older than I was, and she went and she took me to the hairdressers with her to 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 to, to obviously uh, keep her company. And I walked into the salon in Mayfair, West End of Mayfair, and there it was, Splinters International, owned by black people, run by black people, for black people, and the penny dropped. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to be a hairdresser, and that is precisely how I became a hairdresser. Simple story, but it's true. I would, you know, contrary to popular opinion, you know, people ask you silly things like, um, what made you want to do hairdressing? Did you play with dolls? I'm like, what are you talking about? Bro? I was the most, if you like, naughtiest young guy as, as far as I, I knew myself. I started to do hairdressing. I, I walked into Splinters and there the place was, a, a profoundly beautiful, uh, very palatial building indeed. I didn't think such a building existed in London and run by black people. But having said that, there were other organizations at the time. I mean, you had Dyke and Dryden up the road in North London. You had St. Clair's in Shepherd's Bush. You had people like Joan Psalms in Croydon. There was established um, uh, black salons. And what's interesting is actually, um, when one thinks about sort of businesses, Moms and pop salons over the years, over the world, have sustained black families for many years and have taken, and have actually supplemented many, to what we call lawyers today, doctors, politicians, they'll tell you that their mother or father was a, a, either a barber or a hairdressing, a hairdresser. So I wasn't actually ashamed of being a hairdresser because it was a one single thing that connected me to my community. I didn't want to work for anybody else. To be frank, I didn't want to work for white people. To be blunt and to be honest, because I was, you know, we were proud uh, black folks, and hairdressing allowed me that opportunity. And can you imagine? I did I did hairdressing for many years, starting as a kid, and it gave me the absolute autonomy, independence. I was able to buy my house, I bought my car, I grew my children up, I educated my children as a hairdresser. So I have no regrets, guys. So there you are. So this is a, a just a brief story of who I am and where I came from, and. 
first and, and, and last but not least, I have to say that the most influential person in my life, the person who mentored, the person who motivated, the person who showed me the path, was Winston Isaacs, the late Winston Isaacs. I mean, I give this man absolute accolade for having the vision to, to establish a, a business in the West End of London in those days. Right, so it's nothing new for us to have been at, at the top of the food chain. We've been there. It's nothing new for us to have businesses in the West End. And I, as a result, as I got older and became much more uh, financially astute, I eventually opened my own shop in the West End. As a matter of fact, we had four shops uh, in those days. We had a shop in Lewisham, a shop in um, Park Lane. There was a salon in Meadowvale, and there's a salon in Shepherd's Bush. And all that came from working in Splinters, the iconic Splinters. And that's pretty much, guys. I mean, um, this, this gives you a brief insight of who actually I am and where I came from. And we, we've only just begun because we've moved on now from hairdressing into manufacturing. And there you are, we have the product range. And what's nice about the product range, it encourages, not, it's not just about providing a service for women's hair, but it also provides opportunities. I mean, this, this range um, 